Hi, welcome to Movie Review Mom. Today I am reviewing the movie Holmes and Watson. Oh, <laughs> um, it's rated PG-13. It's an hour and a half long and I gave it a D for really dumb and D for don't waste your money. <laughs> This is really a bad movie. The trailer looked like it might have potential, but it mostly looked dumb. And in reality, you pretty much saw the best parts of the movie in that trailer. Um, it's just really stupid and so disappointing because I really like some of the actors that are in the movie. Um, but here's an indication of how bad this movie is. When Sony tried to sell the film to Netflix, Netflix declined. Wow. No, I'm not saying the stuff on Netflix is horrible, but even Netflix was like, yeah, no, we're not going to even make any money off of this because it's so bad, I guess. Um, theaters actually have reported that there was an unusually high amount of audience members who actually walked out of the movie because they thought it was so bad. So I'm just saying, I want you to thank me in the comments below for sitting through this whole movie just so I can warn you not to waste your time and money on this. I mean, I actually sat through the whole thing. Uh, it has an impressively low score of 8% on the tomato meter at Rotten Tomatoes. Wow, again. So sadly, it's just not funny. I'm so assuming that the writers were completely drunk uh, or high or both when they were writing the script, thinking that it was hilarious. Uh, but if you're sober when you watch this, you will know full well that it's just not good comedy, which is surprising because of who's in the cast. Um, a few years ago, actually, I went on a Sherlock Holmes walking tour of London, and, um, you know, I'm a fan of the books. Uh, British author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle would probably be rolling over in his grave if he ever saw this movie disaster. Uh, but I think you might actually like the Benedict Cumberbatch TV series called Sherlock. I really like that. Here are a few tips for parents. It is re rated PG-13. There is some profanity, including one F-bomb. Uh, but there are lots of crude gestures. There's peeing jokes. You know, I mean, you expect that in a kid's type of movie. And in fact, I could kind of expect a 10-year-old would probably think this movie is funny. It's just really childish uh, and immature. Um, humor, I guess. There's a young child who's in a boxing match. He hits and he gets hit. Uh, and then there's lots of talk of a certain male anatomical body part. That's just such juvenile humor, in my opinion. I just don't think that that's funny. And, you know, it's just uh, a lot of the movie has to do with um, sexuality and romance and kind of all that's involved there. And, you know, it's just really dumb. Um, the good things are that there are a couple of themes about logic and friendship and loyalty. So there's that. Uh, and there were uh, some other things that I really liked. For example, I know it seems like the millennials are just not uh, in love with Will Ferrell. They grew up with him, so I guess they've just turned on him. I don't know a single millennial who even likes him anymore, which is weird, because uh, he's funny. I've seen him in funny things. Um, but he's just not in this movie. And then John C. Riley, I really like him, and I always want him to do well. I thought he was absolutely fantastic in the movie Chicago. He can actually sing and do a little shuffling dance. Um, in fact, the two of them, actually the whole cast has this musical number, and it is horrific. It is actually painful to watch. However, it's John C. Riley who actually can sing, and has the best voice out of everybody. Um, there's some lip syncing weird stuff going on in the musical number, but even in other scenes as well. But now I'm telling you more of the things I didn't like. Let me tell you a few more things that I did like. I love Kelly McDonald's adorable Scottish accent. She's so cute. She, your kids, if they see this movie, they'll recognize her probably from playing or from voicing the lead role in the cute movie Brave. Unfortunately, she spends most of this movie playing a really dumb character. But what am I saying? Pretty much everyone in this movie plays a dumb character. Um, so that's disappointing because I like her. I want to see her in Hollywood movies. 
as an actress, you know, we've got to hear her cute voice, but to be able to actually see her and, you know, she's just not that great, but it's mostly because the script is not that great. I did also really like the Billy Zane cameo on the Titanic. Um, that was kind of cute. There are some other little minor roles. The cast actually had some potential. There are some comedians in the cast, for example, Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon. They're really popular in England and I like them. In fact, I discovered probably on Netflix, um, they have a, a little movie series. The first one is called a trip. No, the first one's called the trip. And then the second one's called the trip to Italy. And I thought the first one was really just quirky and funny. And the second one's not quite as good as the first one, but I really enjoyed them. And I could tell that they were popular in the UK. American audiences don't know them as well. Um, we've seen Steve Coogan in a few things, but not a whole lot recently, but we really don't know Rob Brydon. And so I, I want him to be successful in the United States. But again, the, the script was just not great and the roles that they play are not really great. Um, a few things that I didn't like also include um, that there's a cliffhanger, first of all, <laughs> at the end of the movie. No, we don't want to see more of this. Um, and there, but there's lots of political jabs at the United States because it's all filmed in the UK, which is fine. I have a sense of humor. I can totally take it. Um, but then also at President Trump, which is fine. I can take that too. Um, but when it's just sort of over and over and over again, the first time it's funny and maybe even witty. And then after that, it just sort of gets to be really old and tired. And some of the jokes are like that. They just kind of rehash them over and over again, and so they're just not funny anymore. Um, some other weird things is if you are a big Sherlock fan, a Sherlock Holmes fan, uh, you might be curious about this, what they decided to do with Moriarty. Moriarty traditionally has always been a single man, but in this movie, he actually has a daughter. And um, so that might bother you. It didn't bother me, I'm like, whatever. But just in case, I'm giving you the heads up. Uh, and then the editing is just noticeably bad. Now, I know it's ironic for me to talk about editing when my YouTube videos are not great, but hey, I'm not selling tickets at a movie theater, am I? So um, I'm just saying it was a little choppy, and then there's like this weird colorization thing also that's kind of weird too. It just sort of seems like lazy filmmaking. Um, for example, there's a scene where they're supposedly eating onions, and you could tell it's not an onion. You could tell that they, they've got like an apple inside, you know, because it's the way that they eat it. And then just the editing itself, you're just like, you know, what? I don't know. It just seemed lazy is what I'm trying to say. Um, there's a lot of physical comedy and slapstick, and that's really good if you like that kind of humor. But if you're hoping, again, for more intelligent humor, you're definitely not going to find it here. I, I'm really surprised that Two-time Academy Award nominee Ralph Fiennes said yes to this movie. I'm, I'm sure he was thinking it was going to be this hilarious hit in America, um, and it's just bombing at the box office, which is too bad. Um, normally, on my written reviews at moviereviewmom.com, I have a list of all of the funny lines in the movie. Not all of them, but ones that I think are kind of standouts. And after the movie, I just, I couldn't even think of a single funny line. Um, but there is an interesting line, and it's at the very beginning of the movie, and it's actually kind of funny too. But so the very beginning of the movie, you see on the screen this little quote. It says, logic is the sword by which we slay ancient superstitions. But lo, the heart has its own truths to teach us. Oh, that sounds so wise, right? Then it says the source of the quote, which is Hannah Montana, season two, episode seven, or something like that, which is kind of funny. And that's kind of the most meat that you're going to get from that movie. Uh, anyway, <laughs> in the meantime, where is the phrase in the meanwhile? I say it wrong all the time, and it drives my husband nuts. And I can't even remember which is the correct way to say it. 
But anyway, be sure and subscribe, ring that little bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a new movie review. I'm trying to save you time and money. So if I tell you the movie is really crummy, you are certainly more than welcome to go, but I'm trying to save you time and money and also give you the heads up on your kids because I try to look for movies that are family friendly. And again, your kids, your very young kids, may think that this is really funny because it's just silly, um, which is fine. As an adult going in for maybe more sophisticated humor, you know, this isn't gonna be it. Um, but anyway, there's my two cents. I'm trying to save you two cents at the movie theater. Um, I'll see you at the theater. Bye for now.